Welcome back to Let's Have It Out. Every night, a different a newsmaker will be hosting this program, giving you an unfiltered, accountable, and accessible opportunity to interact with all of us. My guest tonight is Stan Katz, a veteran radio broadcaster. We're trying to uncover what makes a good radio host. Before we continue, let's take uh, Timothy from Santon. Timothy, what's your question? Hi, good evening, guys. Great show. I'd like to actually ask you a question because I've got 15 years of um, program experience when it comes to uh, radio. And, you know, things are, are changing now um, in terms of back then we didn't have actually platforms like social media. Currently, we do have platforms like social media whereby, you know, listeners are influenced by what's happening on social media. So should we neglect what's happening on social media and focus on the theater of the mind or should we, um, you know, match what's happening on social media with what's happening on radio. I'll listen on TV. It's the first time me ever hearing somebody say, I'd listen on the TV. Normally it's I'll listen on the radio, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. Give it a, a step, Stan. I have, I have a response, but I'd like you to, to take it first. Okay. Uh, social media, especially YouTube, has made it possible for anyone to get on, to get a platform to, to broadcast. Um, wasn't YouTube's slogan, broadcast yourself? Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. So back in the day, I keep referring to that, it was damn hard to get a job on radio. Mm -hmm. I know how I battled and how I kept sending audition tapes until eventually they got sick of me and gave me a job. But today there's also be, there's a proliferation of radio stations. There are literally hundreds of radio stations. You've got community stations, you've got commercial stations, and of course you've got what's left of the state broadcaster, the public broadcaster, should I say. So, yeah, there are many more jobs available, and uh, they've got to fill those jobs. So there are still, talent will always rise to the top, but um, it's few and far between right now. Talent is battling. Talent is definitely battling. Uh, now, to get back to uh, Timothy from Santon was asking about the fact that uh, he's got 15 years' experience on radio, uh, but now there's this social media element. I think um, the demands on the, the broadcast have changed. Yes. They've enlarged, they've increased, um, and we need to embrace that. I don't think you can shun it out. No, no. Because uh, a lot of um, uh, one of the, the, the checks um, some managers do is say, look, you must post this on social media. So it's, it's, they are not mutually exclusive. No, they no. can coexist very, very easily. Absolutely. You know, one should uh, examine where radio fits in to this plethora of uh, platforms. What is radio? Essentially, now, people have been predicting the demise of radio. For the longest. For the longest time. When television came out, uh, they said that was the end of radio. And radio adapted. Radio has, found, has been able to adapt no matter what has been thrown at it. Go back 38 years to the launch of MTV. The first video they played was by a group called The Buggles mm -hmm. and was called Video Killed the Radio Star. And again, they thought with MTV, uh, radio's dead and radio has survived. So radio, if we look at where it fits in, radio is a companion. Radio is a, an accompaniment to other activities. If you're using social media, it's got all your attention, it's very compelling, mm -hmm. but it's not something that plays in the background. Um, and technology has given us um, opportunities to access the music we like uh, to the exclusion of annoying disc jockeys, to the exclusion of advertising. But where radio fits in is people still well, speaking for myself, mm. I like my music curated. Mm -hmm. I still like to choose my own music, but music, uh, radio provides discovery. Mm. You know, you hear something for the first time, you hear it on radio. Um, so, yeah. But the thing about it is, is, is um, radio is no longer first. No. The world has moved a lot quicker. Now, there's a point you raised about, and uh, you keep, keep coming back to the central point about this discussion is about talent. Uh, talent being um, kicked out or edged out. Um, let's come back to the station managers. 
the program managers. So here you are, you've got the platform, ENCA, let's have it out. What are you going to say? What are you saying right now to a station manager, to a program manager listening right now? What is your message to them? Yes. Are they aware of what they're doing? And how do we correct them? How do we help them, capacitate them? You know, you have a look at who lands up being a program manager. Mm -hmm. And just for the, for the sake of the viewers, the program manager is responsible for everything that goes out on air. And you need to encourage your talent. You need to cut them some slack. You need them to, you, you know, with personality radio, you don't have to be loved by everyone. You can be loved and hated as long as you're not ignored. But the point is people... Sure, you've got to repeat that, Stan. What's that? <laughs> you don't need... You can be hated, you can be loved. As long as you're not ignored. Make impact, all right. Make an impact. And the people who become program managers are people who were successful radio broadcasters, successful on-air talent, but they have no managerial skills. Mm. And management's job is getting results through other people. Let's take a call. Mozi from Kahiso. Good evening. Welcome to Let's Have It Out. Uh, good evening. Good evening, guys. Evening, Mozi. Yeah. your comment? Yeah, my question is, uh, in the history of me listening to radio, I've not heard of a, an, an English drama story on the radio. I only know of vernacular stories. Yeah, so why is that? Um, that's a good question. Depends on the stations you listen to, I guess. Yeah, well, if you listen to a cause, it's granted it's not English, but they do radio dramas and they're very popular. Of course, he's the biggest, has got the biggest listenership in the country. But go back to the mid-70s, Springbok Radio was famous for doing English dramas. They were amazing. Well-written, beautifully acted, well-directed. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of radio in 1976, television is far more compelling when it comes to if you can afford a television set and you've got electricity. Or you could run it over a car battery, but television proved to be far more compelling than radio. And so radio, uh, which was in those days block programmed, mm -hmm. which meant that the program uh, preceding the next program could be something totally different. It could be requests followed by a drama, followed by music, etc. So radio gradually retreated to music. And uh, today, to keep people listening, you've got five, six songs in a row, mm. which doesn't allow much room for creativity. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, because uh, I've, I've come across a few consultants in my life, and there was a consultant who was, in, I think, in the UK, and how he uh, gave his uh, presenters opportunities to speak, he'd literally reward them with a link. <laughs> to say, um, you'll have one link an hour. If I'm impressed, you're going to have another link. That's brilliant. And if you're impressed, yet another link. Because these days, we have so many talking heads, and you just want to say, just shut up. Exactly. If you don't have something more entertaining and more creative to say than a song which costs a million rand to produce, shut up and play the music. So I think that's a brilliant way to reward them with links. So you are incentivized to put effort into every link. And as I said, when I worked in the States, I worked with people who would time their links. They would practice them and re redo them until it was perfect. Taking their craft very seriously. Very seriously. Uh, okay, Stan, we have to go to a break, and then we'll be right back.